Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. I want to greet you this day. The Lord has been faithful. This is a new year. Happy New Year 2022. This is the year of the Lord. I want to thank God for having enabled us to even cross to this new year. This new year, we have a lot of hope. Hope that God is going to do a new thing in our lives. God is going to do a new thing in our country for the glory and honor of his name. I want us to go back to the word of the Lord uh, today. Uh, our book being the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 11. The Bible says in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 11, then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with the seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. Today, in our program, Rediscovering Your Dominion Mandate, I want us to look at steps to being fruitful. I said that for you to have dominion, for you to have authority, for you to have power, then you have to be fruitful. Being fruitful means producing. You have to produce results. Now, I want us to go through steps towards becoming fruitful. For me and for you to be fruitful, what do we need to do? What do we need to have? Uh, it is possible, by the way, to work very hard. And I have seen people working very hard and sincerely, yet they are not fruitful. But then that is not the will of God. Many a times, and uh, believers, I want you to listen to me. We go to church, we pray, we are so good, we are righteous, but then we are not fruitful. For the 10 years that you have been born again, if you had to be asked what results or what you've been able to do, you realize that there is nothing. Uh, if a non-believer would ask you, my brother, my sister, you have been born again for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, what have you been able to do? And unfortunately to some people, there is nothing. So uh, fruitfulness or fruitlessness, fruit, fruitlessness, that is not being fruitful, occurs when we pursue activities that are not beneficial, activities that do not yield results. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every work that will produce results, but those results are not beneficial. That work does not make you to be fruitful. Amen? We become fruitless when we pursue activities that do not draw from the strength of our God-given seeds. And there are so many believers in the church. Today, I am addressing believers in the church, those who are born again and have made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of their lives. Many believers in the church are not fruitful. People go to church, they sit down, they listen to the sermons, they give marks. Today, someone was powerful. The pastor really preached. The evangelist, the teacher really taught. But then after that, life remains to be the same. That is not the will of God. We need to be fruitful as believers. First um, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. This is what Paul says. He says this, that all things are lawful. In other words, all things are morally legitimate. All things are permissible. But not all things are beneficial or advantageous. That is to say that the many activities we involve ourselves in, we should be able now to sit down and evaluate ourselves and ask, am I being fruitful? Are these activities making me to be fruitful? Is there anything that I am producing? Remember, 
This program is called Rediscovering Your Dominion Mandate. You cannot have dominion if you are not producing. You cannot have dominion if you are not fruitful. So, to become fruitful then, we must not just work hard. Listen to me. We must not just work hard, but we must work with the seeds that God has given unto us. I'm talking about the seeds. Remember when we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, the Bible says, And God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. So God created the vegetation. When the vegetation produced fruits, Inside the fruit were the seeds. Now the seeds are there to ensure that there is continuity of the vegetation. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus. Now in us human beings, God has also put in us seeds. Now what are these seeds in human beings? These are talents. These are gifts. These are ideas that God has given unto us. So these, I call them seeds. God has given you a talent. He has given you an idea. He has given you a gift. That is what I call a seed. And remember this. I want you to get me clearly. That every one of us has a seed. There is no one, and I repeat, there is no one who does not have a seed. Remember, if you want to grow, if you want to increase financially, if you want to become rich, you have to make use of that seed that God has given unto you. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when these seeds are discovered, when these seeds are valued and put into use and nurtured, they grow and bear fruits. Amen. Remember again that each one of us has something unique to offer. You have something unique to offer, and that is the faithfulness of God. You have something unique to offer. Maybe when I say you have something unique to offer, you look at yourself. You look at your abilities. You look at how life has, you know, taken you. You look at your background. You look at your name. I want you to, to, to look at Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says that he made us in his image and in his likeness. There is no way that God will make you and leave you without a seed. So remember that um, all of us have something unique to offer. Number two, our uniqueness is the source of our fruitfulness. I want to remember that. I want to re repeat that. Our uniqueness is our source of fruitfulness. Number three, we can all be fruitful in life. My brother, my sister, we can all be fruitful in life in different ways. And you know, God has given us different seeds. Your seeds do not resemble my seeds. And my seeds do not resemble the other person's seeds. So God has given us different seeds. That is why we are unique. And it is in that uniqueness that actually our fruitfulness come from. That means if you are in a church and there are so many of you, each one of you is unique. And therefore, each one of you has something to offer. Don't just go to church, believer, and you just listen to the sermon, you just go back home, and you make that to be a pattern in your life. No. When you go to church, can you be able to offer something in that church? If it is worship service, are you able to offer something? If it is in terms of ministry, are you able to offer something in that church? So that you make that church better. You make the kingdom of God better. I want to say this, that God has called us, you and I, to make the kingdom better. What are you doing in the kingdom of God to make it better? Remember, God has given you that seed. And you can use that seed to make the kingdom of God better. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four is we must, and I want to say, we must chart our own path to fruitfulness. My brother, my sister, you have to chart your own path to fruitfulness. Nobody is coming to chart that path for you. You sit down, you evaluate yourself, 
You call yourself into a small meeting where you are the speaker, where you are the audience, where you are the secretary, where you are the chairman of that meeting, and you talk to yourself, ask yourself, why am I here? What can I do in my life? What purpose am I serving? What is my kingdom assignment? You have to ask yourself those questions. And when you come up with an answer, that answer is an indicator to what your seed is. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many people who go to church. And you know, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to get the heart of this message. There are so many people who go to church. And you go to church, yours is just to sit down and listen to the word of God. And you are dressed properly, you, are, you humble yourself in the church. But you know, that is not what God has called you to do. No, God has not called you to be a, a, a spectator in his kingdom. He has called you to be a worker. Go to church wherever you are and be a worker in that church. Have something that you can do in that church. You can even decide that my work in this church will be to be cleaning the floor. My work in this church is to be an usher. My work in this church is to be an interpreter. My work in this church is to serve in the hospitality department. Have something that you can offer because God has given you a seed and that seed is your talent. That seed is your gift. That seed is an idea. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Purpose in this year of 2022 that you are not going to be a bench warmer or a seat warmer in the church, but you are going to be a minister in the church because that is the will of God. You know, sometimes we ask ourselves, what is the will of God for me? And you know, we ask passionately, but did you know that the will of God for you is for you to be able to use that seed to make the kingdom of God better? That is the will of God for you. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus. I want us to, 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 to have a, a parable that Jesus used in teaching in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 and verse 32. Uh, turn with me in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 13 uh, and verse 31 and 32. This is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse uh, 30 to 31. Listen very carefully. Verse 31, the Bible says, He told them another parable. Jesus taught in parables, and many people could not be able to comprehend. So, He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. So Jesus is giving a parable. And in this parable, he gives an example of a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, the ugliest of all seeds. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this parable, there are lessons that we have to learn in becoming fruitful. Amen? Number one, identify your seed. We can be able to see here, Jesus is identifying the seed. And the seed is the mustard seed. I have said it is the smallest of all the seeds. And again, it is the ugliest. It is not pleasant to look at. Hallelujah. So Jesus identified the seed. You have to identify your seed. You have to identify your talent and tell yourself, I am good in this area. I am able in this area. This is what I can be able to do. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. So Jesus begins with the parable by identifying what his seed was, which seed he was dealing with. Amen? So he, 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 he calls it by name. And the name of the seed is the mustard seed. You have to call your ability by its name. And you say, me, I am good in singing. I am good in teaching the word. I am good in dancing. I am good in drawing. You have to name the seed. You have to identify the talent, the ability 
That is the ability to name your seed. Huh? The ability to name your seed. The ability to name your talent. The ability to name your dear is actually the first step into fruitfulness. Hallelujah. My prayer to you this year, 2022, is for you to identify your seed. May you identify your seed in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you the wisdom to be able to identify your talent, to be able to identify your gift in this year of 2022. Now, I want you to understand this. You know, identifying your seed seems to be just a simple thing. But did you know so many people, so many people have not begun this process. They have not begun this step of identifying their talents and their gifts. And so many people are doing something that is not within them. Something that is not their gift and something that is not their talent. That is why you are employed today. After a few days you are sucked because you are not productive. It means that is not your seed. It is not your gift. So this will help you to see the potential within the seed. The potential within yourself. Hallelujah. Even if it starts, you know, sometimes we begin things small. And you know, the Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginning. So sometimes you begin small. You begin that business in a small way. You should never despise that. It always begins from somewhere. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your seed, that is your talent or your gift, is inside you. It is inborn. It is something that you have been born with. You don't borrow it from somewhere else. You don't borrow it from somebody. Ay, hallelujah. You know, by the way, education is just a means of enhancing your seed, enhancing your gifts. Education and knowledge do not impart gifts and talents. Hallelujah. And that is why Europe is ahead of Africa. Because in Europe, they look at a child when the child is very small. And they are able to tell that the gifting of this child is this and that. So they mentor the child. When the child is taken to school, he is taken to school to enhance that particular gift. But you know here in Africa, you are taken to school and you learn everything. So that at the end of Form 4, you can now be able to discover your gift. Now you can imagine there is somewhere... A child of five years has already discovered the gift. And here, a young man of 18 years has not yet discovered his or her gift. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why maybe our, we, we, we need to look at our education system. Amen. So, education only enhances and develops your gift and your talent. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A mustard seed does not learn to be a mustard seed. Hallelujah. You know, I said there are so many people who do not know their gifts. They do not know their talents. So they keep on copying other people. We have, we, 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 we have a, a society of people who are copying other people. They want to become other people. But I want you to know that God has made you as you. You are not a photocopy. He has made you as an original. So don't live the whole of your life trying to become somebody else. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A mustard seed does not spend its life trying to become an apple. A mustard seed is a mustard seed. It is not an apple. Hallelujah. The best, by the way, the best a mustard seed can become is actually a fake apple. Because if a mustard seed tries to become an apple, then it will be a fake apple. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to, uh, to, to ask yourself and to, 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 to wonder, how many fake people do we have? How many fake gifts do we have? How many fake professionals do we have? And that is the reason why there is no productivity. For us to have productivity, we must have people who have identified their seeds. They have identified their talents and their giftings. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think a time is coming 
when you go for an interview, you want a certain job, it is not actually your purpose. It is actually your gifts and your talents that shall be actually be interviewed. Hallelujah. And I think when we reach there, then now we will be in a position as a country to be called that Kenya is industrialized. Hallelujah. Kenya is a first country world. Is a, is a, is a first, first country. Not, not third or what. When people discover their gifting. So, uh, no one goes actually to the grocery to buy a fake apple. You go to the grocery to buy an original apple. And you see now, that is what happens in the job market. So there are people who spend all their lives trying to become something else. I remember in the Bible, there were these sons of Sceva. And you know, they saw Paul, they saw Peter pray for people, lay hands on people, and demons came out of the people. And they tried the same. And when they did that, the Bible says, the demons asked them, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? They were trying to become what they were not. And the Bible says they were beaten thoroughly. Hallelujah. They were beaten thoroughly. That is what happens when you try to become something that you are not. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So your seed is a gift that God placed inside you. You are not empty. You are not empty. You have something in you that you can be able to offer. So a gift is something that is given freely. You do not buy a gift. Hallelujah. So you don't buy the gift in you. You don't buy a talent. You are given freely. Hallelujah. God does not give you money. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But he gives you ideas on how you can make money. So wherever you are, I want to declare to you the year 2022, may the Lord give you ideas on how to make money. May the Lord give you ideas on how to make your home to be better. May the Lord give you ideas how to make that business better. May the Lord give you ideas how to make that job better so that you can become better than what you are in 2021. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, for you to be able to benefit from that gift, from that talent, from that seed, from that idea, you must be able to recognize that it is there and it is yours. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That seed is there and it is yours. It belongs to you. There are individuals who move from one school to another. Hallelujah. They move from one college to another. And they move from one seminar to another. They move from one conference to another. They move from one meeting to another. They move from one church to another in order to acquire a unique gift. But that is an exercise in futility. Iyo ni kazi ambayo haiwezi kuleta matunda, haiwezi kuzalisha matunda yoyote. Nataka ufahamu hivi, habari njema ni kwamba mungu tayari ameweka ndani mwako vipawa. Mungu tayari ameweka ndani mwako talanta. Ambazo unaitaji uzichoche zikaweze kufanya kazi katika maisha yako. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So God allowed the plant life to have a seed within itself. Why? For continuity. Hallelujah. So you have a seed inside yourself. Why? For continuity. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the first trees and the first fruits were created directly by God. But the subsequent trees, hallelujah, and fruits will come into existence when the seeds within the fruits are planted. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say this, there are men and women who have gone ahead of us in terms of faith. You read the book of Hebrews chapter 11. They have laid the foundation and we can learn from those people. And God, the, the, the seeds that were in those people, God has already put in us. Why? So that there has to be a continuity. It is only that we have not discovered those seeds. Sometimes we pray, we say, God, we want what? 
was happening in the 70s to happen today. God, we want what was happening in the 80s in churches to happen today. There was a lot of revival. Did you know what? The seeds of revival are inside you. The moment you discover them and the moment you begin to exploit them, revival will come. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you need to reach a point and say enough is enough. We cannot continue like this. You know, the church cannot continue to be silent when evil is being done outside there. The church has to rise up. The church has to wake up and take her position and wage the good fight of the spiritual warfare. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you must know that the seed is within you. That is the first step. You have to know that the talent, the gift, is within you. This sounds easy, and it sounds straightforward, yet it is actually the very fundamental steps into fruitfulness. If you discover that, I'm telling you, you are now on your way to fruitfulness, and you are now rediscovering your dominion mandate. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to look at the five important signals that will help you. To identify your seed, there are signals, there are indicators that will help you be able to identify your seeds in Jesus' name. Number one, identify your seed by discovering the things that bring you fulfillment. There are those things when you do, you really feel you are fulfilled. You really feel you are satisfied and you have peace and you know that you have done something. Identify those things. Hallelujah. Identify those things. And these are the things that you do without being told to do. You do them out of obligation. These are things that when you do them, you feel you have done something. These are things that you do them even without being paid, even without being supervised, but you just find yourself doing them. That is an indicator to your seed. Hallelujah. I want you to look at yourself. I want you to go through yourself. I want you to recollect yourself and identify those things that you do. And they bring a lot of fulfillment to your life. And you are not supervised to do them. Nobody reminds you to do them. That is an indicator to what your seed is. Number two, identify your seed by discovering the things that you learn so easily. Identify your seed by discovering the things that you learn so easily. At one point in life, you will discover that there are things that you are able to do easier than other things. That is an indicator of what your seed is. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This can connect you. You easily connect to some ideas without trouble. You easily connect to some tasks. That is an, uh, an indicator. Number three, identify your seed by discovering your passion. What are you passionate about? That is an indicator to your seed. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, identify your seed by discovering your native wisdom. There is that wisdom that we say you are born with. You, you have not gone to school to get it. Hallelujah. It is native. It is not acquired. You are born with it. So you can identify your seed by discovering your native wisdom, the wisdom that actually you are born with. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, then you are able to identify your seed. Number, that is number four. Number five, identify your seed by discovering your flow. There are things when you do, you flow easily. You don't struggle. There are people, you give them a microphone to sing. They can sing 10 songs. They have no list of the songs. But the moment they begin to sing one song, another one comes. Identify the activities that you flow so easily. And that is an indicator to your seed. It is an indicator to your talent and to your gift. So, you know, a fish is never taught how to swim. Hallelujah. It just flows with the water. An elephant is not taught to be an elephant. It is just an elephant. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the fish will just move according to the flow, according to the streamline. 
It is never taught. So the things you flow in so easily are actually an indicator to what your seed is. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you to become fruitful, you know, you have to identify these things. Now, when you are fruitful, when you produce results, when you engage yourself in activities that are beneficial, and, you know, at